Uh, did you have a better a green pointer? Is here. Okay, great. So uh, that's not the slide. Let's go back. Yeah, one. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, a, a, a program that I started many years ago that was to address some of the issues you heard Mike talk about. And it's connected very much closely to what Mike Wilton was discussing. So there'll be a little bit of overlap. Uh, but before, before we do that, I just uh, wanted to show you some of the data of a cohort of bi incoming freshman biology students at UCSB who started here in fall of 2011. Um, we can see they come in, all, this bar, this is using the ribbon tool from uh, UC Davis. This is a wonderful tool. If you can get your data in there, it's kind of fun to find out what happened to our students. You know, it's like, where are they going? And um, so, uh, and I segregate them into two groups, um, the non-URM and the URMs. And you can, this first bar here represents all those freshmen coming in all ready to tackle biology and they're gung-ho and they're ready to go. And then what happens to them two years later? And then finally, this is in tw the fall of 2013. And the next point is uh, 20, uh, January 2018. And so what happens to them? So we can see here's all our bio students who are non-URMs. They come in. And by two years later, we've sort of segregated quite a few out. And then finally, if they stick it out for the two years in the non and URMs, they pretty well end up in, these are our degrees. We have 10 different majors. And this little bar up here is the College of Creative Studies, who has a biology major. And the ones that come in pretty much stay in and graduate eventually. Now, of course, they graduated earlier, but I was looking at the last data point to see, make sure we captured everybody. And, but they do uh, segregate off into other majors, many of them segregating into MLPS majors, and that's the math, life sciences, and physical sciences. And uh, one of the uh, most common source, places they go is uh, environmental sciences and psychology and brain sciences. And so that's all great. Um, some of them, though, do migrate into social sciences and humanities. And, and fine arts, a very small, fairly small number, and some aren't enrolled um, at all by the end of two years. And here's the summary of all that data. Basically, 79% graduate from UCSB, which is great. 63% uh, graduate in MLPS majors, great. Uh, we don't care if they stay in biology, they're in STEM. 41% uh, actually do finish in biological sciences. 11% in social sciences, 4% in humanities and fine arts. Over here in the URM cohort coming in, 78% graduate from UCSB. So they do graduate pretty much at the same rates as the non-URM students, which is really good. Um, but uh, only about 45% stay in STEM areas, and only 20% graduate in the biological sciences. And they flow at much, at much double the rate into the social sciences and the humanities. And I'm sure anybody who's looked at this, probably there's nothing surprising there. So the question we want to address, or at least I want to worry about, is this difference in um, probably a 20% difference between STEM, if you're non-URM, versus URM. If we're going to have a diverse uh, STEM workforce, uh, that has to be diminished. Now, what is that pre-biology major doing during those first two years at UCSB? Well, um, we send them off to take chemistry plus lab and calculus. We have no, we don't offer a lower math course. There's no pre-calculus course offered at UCSB. You go right into calculus and, uh, and you go take freshman chemistry for a year and the third quarter you can take linear algebra or statistics. And that's, then you go into your sophomore year, and then uh, we have the intro bio. You've heard a little bit about intro bio. I'm going to really focus on that. We have the intro bio lab, but also you should take OCHEM, and oh, by the way, take NLAB, and oh, uh, you know, you should probably take physics too. And then in the winter quarter, take the second quarter of intro bio, but also take ecology and evolution, and oh, it's a common lab, and then oh, OCHEM, OCHEM and lab, and physics and lab. And this quarter, actually, if anybody actually takes this, and survives, they're amazing. 
And uh, then the third quarter, they take the uh, diversity intro bio and the lab, and OCHEM lab, and physics. Now, a lot of our students actually don't do the physics, even though we recommend, recommend, because they can do that as a senior, because it's not a prerequisite for any of our major courses. But the OCHEM and freshman chem and intro bio are. So that's a pretty rigorous uh, two years. And if you make it through that with a C or average or better, you're in our majors. You make it out. Uh, so I'm going to focus now in on what's happening in that intro bio class. And I'm talking now about the traditional one, uh, not the active one, the one that Mike uh, used as his control group. So I teach in that MCDB 1A uh, course. Uh, it's taught in four 50-minute lectures per week. And we cover biochemistry, cell biology, elder development, and genetics. I only teach a third of the course. So it's team taught with three faculty. I've been doing it since 1986. I think Susie took the class. There's one of my ex-students right there. Um, anyway, and we do it in Campbell Hall, which has 860 seats, but we have 1,100 students enrolled, so we put 300 or so in another room, and we live project ourselves into that room. Um, there are no discussion sections, and there are multiple choice exams. Now, why are there no discussion sections? Well, literally, every single qualified TA is consumed by the lab. We have, we, even if we had money for discussion sections, we would have no warm bodies. We simply don't have enough graduate students to offer discussion sections. So that was really not an option. So <laughs> anyway, I guess this is designed to be worse practices. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you survive this, you are really good. Uh, so uh, about tw fall of 23, I initiated and a peer mentoring program. I read some books. I read Making Scientists, which described a similar program. It was a really interesting book. And of course, a lot of literature on this. So we developed a co-curricular support program for 1A and 1B. And it's voluntary. About 20, 120 students sign up each quarter. Uh, since it started, we've uh, mentored about 820 individual students, uh, have participated. And the mentors are volunteers. And this is biomentor quarters. Some do one quarter, some do three quarters, some do four quarters. Um, so 312 quarters. We usually get about 25 to 35 mentors. And what happens is students are randomly assigned to, in groups of four to six per biomentor. And these groups persist for the entire quarter. So we try to maintain, uh, make a little uh, learning community with a mentor. And that doesn't change. So they meet with the same people all quarter. So what are our goals? Well, to create that collaborative learning community, uh, teach students how to effectively learn in a group. Uh, we emphasize uh, active learning rather than tutoring. That's one of the hardest things, to convince our mentors not to copy us and tutor all their knowledge. You know, when I say, well, if you're talking most of the time, you're not doing your job. You should be talking no more than a third of the time uh, or less. And uh, develop, we really want to develop these uh, uh, students to be self-motivated learners and know how to study and proceed and, and, and learn as a group that they don't need the mentor. They have to learn that they don't need the mentor. The mentor should, the end of the, hopefully, this whole process disappears. And of course, the thing I was talking about earlier, can we improve the outcomes for those students at risk of leaving STEM? Now, we already heard about the uh, active learning classroom. So we meet uh, in the active learning classroom, uh, at least for the groups meet on a regular scheduled hour once a week. Um, and they meet uh, with each table having their mentor and in the, in the groups four to six students at the table. Um, so who are the mentors? They're uh, junior or senior biological science majors. They have to have a GPA of above 3.0 especially in the major. They're unpaid volunteers. They don't get any money for it. They enroll their course. The expectations is they'll meet with the mentors two hours a week. They meet in, that scheduled, in a scheduled time that uh, groups of six, five to six mentors with their groups meet in a fixed time one hour a week. And then individual, the second hour is decided by any time, any place, uh, uh, what a library or coffee shop or something somewhere else at a flexible time, so that we call them ad hoc meetings. 
Then they're also expected to meet as a group with the faculty one hour a week for a weekly training. So training the biomentors is the big effort by the faculty. Once you adequately train your biomentors, it kind of runs itself and it doesn't cost any money. But the, the big work is training those biomentors. And we start with a sort of a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, two to three hour training where we go over effective pedagogy uh, with the group. And then every week we meet, as I said before, one hour a week. And we emphasize um, mentoring of facilitating group discussion in contrast to that telling them all this good stuff you know. And that's always been, you know, when you, when you observe them, uh, some do a better job than others, some just you realize are not doing what you ask them to do and you kind of have to intervene. So it's good to drop in and see what they're doing. Um, but one really interesting thing about this, we asked the biomentors to play a significant role in developing program activities and content. And I think that's really been effective in engaging them in the process. In fact, many of them say, oh, this is, I like this because I could, you know, I wasn't just being handed some stuff that I'm supposed to do, but I'm actually helping make the questions or whatever the activities or whatever. So that, that has been a, a fun part uh, to see them sort of grow as, you know, um, educators and, and scientists, basically. So what do the students think? Well, I've done some anonymous surveys, but you get all kinds of, for those who fill out the surveys, you get great uh, responses and they love it and they'd recommend to a friend and whatever. But of course, we don't get 100% responding. So maybe just the ones that like it respond. But uh, I love this. It seemed like we were having a discussion about bio rather than him lecturing us. And I think that's an, an, our ultimate goal. I mean, that's, oh, I'm in heaven. I've managed to do what I wanted to do. So what about the impact on grades? So this is a comparison of the students in biomanners to the rest of the class. And yes, they do quite a bit better. Uh, so you might argue, well, you know, these are just the motiv motivated ones that sign up, right? So that's difficult to deal with when it's um, volunteer to sign up. But we, we thought about ways of sort of, certainly Mike, I have to say, Mike helped me do all the statistics. Thank you, Mike. Um, so one way we kind of try and control for that, uh, not everybody who tries to sign up for biomentors gets a spot because they'd log in and they'd sign up and then the times that they could meet they, is full because they, once they fill up, they, we don't take any more students. So we have this cohort of people who signed up for biomentors but didn't get a spot. So we used them as a control group and compared them to the ones that came uh, more than once and then those who came more than five times. And you can see there seems to be a dosage effect that the more they come, the better grade they're going to get. So that survey that Mike was mentioning, uh, they were part of that survey. And so we could pull them out and ask, uh, what, how did they feel about uh, the, the UCI survey that Mike mentioned in his talk? And one of the um, parameters that showed up is that they were much, bio, people who are in biomedics were much more likely to feel they're part of a community of biological science. And that makes perfect sense because they, they were in a community, their little study group. So this data is new. Uh, we now, uh, Mike helped me, of course, with a longitudinal study to ask, uh, does it have any long-term impact? And a linear regression has shown that, yes, uh, there is, if you're mentored in, uh, for, the, for the students who take the traditional lecture class, if they're mentored in biomentors, there's a positive coefficient and a likelihood they'll persist in the major to four years. So it looks uh, positive in that sense. So we, not everything's perfect, guaranteed. Um, biomentors attendance is optional uh, and fluctuates. If there's an OCHEM midterm, oh my god, you know, they're, they vacate, they're, they disappear. If there's an intro bio midterm, they're back. And so 
convincing them that uh, innerly, you know, studying every week throughout the whole quarter is the way, the way you become an A-plus student. You just don't boom or bust studying. And convincing of them that is a challenge. Um, some students sign up and then disappear after one or two weeks. They just probably, but they've taken a spot and excluded some of those students who didn't get a spot. Uh, but we tend not to want to interject someone after two weeks into a group. So we just don't let it. But those seats remain empty. So groups might start out with six, but end up with four. Uh, and we just don't like putting someone in late in the quarter. And it's interesting, though, persistence in the program is very biomenor specific. Some biomenors get a group of six students, and they don't lose a single one, and they never miss a meeting. And other biomenors get start out with six, and at five, three, two, only one showing up. And we're thinking, OK, there's some difference between some of these biomenors. Some have a very loyal group, and others seem to have driven them out of the program. Um, no, it could be the biomenor, or, you know, actually, it could be just random chance. They, they got a bad subset of students to start off with. So I don't really jump on it's the biomenor's fault. Another question is, can biomenors become an official separate course? And that might take care of this problem. Oh, you got to go. And, well, there's no faculty or instructor in the room. I literally don't think, unless we are willing to do that, we can do that. Right? Uh, as far as I understand, there's no way we'll ever allow undergraduates to be an instructor of a course. Right? And finally, um, I'm out of time, I apparently. I have three minutes. And could we incorporate biometers into that lecture course? And maybe we're, we're toying with the idea of expanding into a 90 seat room and maybe have one TA and lots of biometers. And then we could scale out this model maybe to a much larger percentage of class. And then it would mimic more like the class that you heard uh, Mike talking about. But right now, uh, we don't have that room yet. Hopefully, we will in the future. So I'd like to acknowledge the people that have been helping me do this. Thank you, Lalo, Lynn, Mike. It's been great to work with them. Fantastic. And of course, all those. UCSB students who volunteer their time. It's really one of the more enjoyable things to work with these outstanding students who also want to volunteer and help their students. They are really the cream of our uh, crop. Um, uh, it's really, I'm vice, I'm vice chair of undergraduate studies and I spend way too much to those struggling students. So spending time with these students really kind of makes my life much better. And, uh, so I really uh, enjoy this. This is great. Um, and I think that's it. Any questions? Yeah. So I, I was wondering if you've done any kind of tracking with the mentors to see the impact of, of this experience of teaching on what they do afterwards. Well, uh, I have to say, I always think I get the sense that the mentors get more out of it than the mentees. But many of them go to med school. And very few want to be high school teachers. <laughs> very, very few. Uh, though they love the experience, you know, they, uh, we haven't tracked it, but just anecdotally what they tell me. Uh, do they want to be professors? Do they want to be in education? Not so much. And finally, you have mentors who want to do this more than once. Oh, yeah. Oh, some come back. Every time they could possibly do it. Uh, yeah, we've had them do almost five times. And I don't know how we did it five times, but they, they kept wanting to come back. They loved it. And, and the college, of, instead of a unit, they can, the college honors program uh, requires 50 hours a year of community service. So instead of a unit, they can use the 50 hours for um, fulfilling community service. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that training the bio mentors consumes a little bit of time. Can't you get the really good bio mentors that are juniors to train the incoming one? You know, it's, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to let go. You know, it's sort of like if you whisper here and it goes around the room, it's going to be a you different story. Oh, well, watch it. If you're watching it, you might as well run it. So the other thing I didn't mention, I should say, it becomes self 
self-propagating because the people who are mentored want to be biomentors. So after a few years, you have no shortage of biomentors because the people that got mentored want to give back. And so you don't have to pay them. It doesn't cost any money. It only costs somebody's time sort of setting it up and training those biomentors. One more quick question. Maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. So the, the same kind of similar to some of the supplemental instruction uh, programs that uh, I've seen or heard about at different We have class. We have something called class. And it's run by uh, associated students. Yeah. And we have no say in who they hire or what they do. And they just tutor, mostly. It's all straight tutoring. And so some students say, oh, this is way better than class. Some students do both. Some students say, oh, I don't like this. I like class where they just tell me what I need to know to pass that test. Um, but yeah, class is pretty much a straight tutoring environment. It's our, like repeating our lectures, I guess, or I don't know why. Um, because they have bigger groups. They, they have 30 in a room instead of, we, but way better than 800, but still they're lecturing to them. OK. Thank last, you so much. Sure. Thank you.